At four minutes to eight on the evening of October 30th, 2022, Brazil's Superior Electoral Court confirmed that the returning Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva had been elected as the country's next president. After a tense election day marked by voter suppression allegations, the actual counting of ballots was very quick indeed. Less than three hours after polls closed, Lola was declared the winner with 50.9% of the votes, giving him just over 2 million votes more than incumbent Jair Bolsonaro. And that made it Brazil's tightest presidential election ever. Lola's victory is often attributed to his Workers' Party's strength in the poor Northeast. But taking a closer look, other important details may well have helped Lola secure the win. Welcome to Brazil Rewind, a series of videos recapping all the most important stories in Brazil this year. Today, we'll recap Lula's path to victory and illustrate how he shifted Brazil's electoral map. The Bolsonaro administration gave one of the world's most controversial and criticised COVID pandemic responses, resulting in over 690,000 deaths. While it was hardly a top-of-mind issue for voters in October 2022, it seemed that the damage that the pandemic had caused to Bolsonaro's reputation was already done by that point. And crucially, during the pandemic, Bolsonaro's opposition began to band together, spying Lula as a figure strong enough to beat the incoming president. Other key players in the 2022 campaign emerged during the pandemic, including Senator Simone Tebic, one of the leading voices of the Senate's COVID inquiry. She eventually ran for president and finished third before joining forces with Lola for the crucial runoff. As Brazil began enjoying high vaccination rates after government-imposed delays, the Bolsonaro administration hoped to take advantage and portray Brazil as a country on the rise once more, but inflation got in the way. Inflation figures around the world skyrocketed, and in Brazil, it hit low-income populations where they feel it the most, food and gas. The rise in food prices was clearly perceived by the population. The country was left shocked by images of people scavenging scraps of meat and supermarkets selling bones. And the pricing policy of government-controlled oil firm Petrobras meant that fuel prices remained high which had its own knock-on effect on the cost of services and groceries. With the election looming, Bolsonaro knew that he wouldn't stand a chance if he didn't lower gas prices and contain inflation. He issued a series of economically populist measures to artificially hold fuel prices down and dish out last-minute aid benefits to poor people. And judging by his final vote count, the strategy definitely had an effect, just not enough to make him win. For the entirety of 2022, it was crystal clear that the election would be down to Bolsonaro and Lula, with no space for any third-way options. In the first round, Lula led by just over 5 percentage points. Opinion polls before the vote had suggested that ex-president could win by a landslide, meaning that Bolsonaro's resilience came as a huge shock and set up a very tense runoff. And Bolsonaro started the second round campaign well gathering support from elected governors and members of Congress. Meanwhile, Lola sought to expand his broad coalition, attracting financial elites, and most importantly, third-place candidate Simone Tebic. More than a mere endorsement, Tebic threw herself head and shoulders into the Lola runoff campaign. And Lola won the second round by a tight margin, and the swift recognition of the results by Latin American leaders, the US, China and European countries helped to prevent any attempt to question the ballots. And at first glance, it seemed the election had repeated the same broad trends from 2018 and 2014. But giving a closer look, there were key details that helped explain Lola's victory. Despite losing the overall vote in the populous southeast, Lola gained significant ground in those states in comparison to his party's performance in 2018. Sao Paulo, the country's most populous state, is home to over 22% of the Brazilian electorate, and Lola improved the Workers' Party's performance in almost every Sao Paulo city. 
Likewise, in the state of Minas Gerais, Lula improved on the Workers' Party's 2018 result and edged Bolsonaro by a tight margin in the closest thing Brazil has to a bellwether state. Brazil's northeast and poor cities remain strongholds for the Workers' Party due to their strong identification with Lula's first two terms as president in the 2000s. The Jair Bolsonaro government reshaped and renamed Lula's landmark Bolsa Família cash transfer program, giving it the name Auxilio Brasil, but data from the 2022 election shows that its beneficiaries still prefer Lula. In the tightest presidential run ever, Keeping a good performance in the Northeast was important, but gaining ground in the most populous areas might have been even more decisive for Lula's victory. Like, share and comment for more videos on everything Brazil.